Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I've been getting swamped with emails about how I've been doing the Chrome and a lot of people asking very specific questions and instead of answering all the emails, I'm going to do a tutorial on it like I talked about previously. Uh, but before I do the tutorial, I think I need to cover some basics about just the supplies that you would need before I get into all the chemicals and the paints and everything. The basic stuff that you'll need to have on hand to be able to do this. Now it's not the cheapest thing to do but doing it at home is considerably less money than having it done someplace and a lot of the equipment that I have here is not high-end stuff at all I've got cheap versions of just about everything and it worked very well as you can see now if you remember my last video I weathered the suit so there's quite a bit of weathering but you can see that it's basically mirror reflective all over you can see all my bikes on the ceiling. It's it's very reflective. The finish came out great. And I did it in my backyard, which is not optimal. Uh, a paint booth would be way better. And I actually, when I do my next suit, I will build a small enclosure to paint it in. But, um, I mean, as you can see, it's you know, I don't have any real flaws. Even though I did it outside and the wind and dust and things are falling, uh, there's uh, only a handful of little flubs in the actual paint. Uh, so, this was, I don't know, probably a tenth of the price of, as it would have been if I had sent it off to get done someplace else, which is really good. And this is my first try, so I, all the errors and things I made, I learned a lot doing this. This is basically my practice suit, and then uh, when I do my next one, it'll be even better. But, anyway, let me get back to what I was talking about, which is the supplies that you're going to need. Um, first and foremost... You are going to need a compressor. Now, um, what I have there is a Husky 30-gallon uh, compressor. And I would looked at smaller models. I think a 20-gallon would probably work just fine. Uh, you might even get, be able to get away with an even smaller compressor on a project like this because you don't have um, extended long bursts of spraying like you would if you're doing a car or something. So you can get away with a little bit smaller, but 30 gallon is great. Uh, like I said, I was actually going to get a 20 gallon and my wife just surprised me with this one. She knew I was looking at compressors and she just came home with it just like a present for my birthday. So there's that and it's awesome and um, did a really good job. Now for the actual spray guns I used, um, I couldn't justify getting like a thousand dollar paint gun so I just got these cheapo central pneumatic this kit from Harbor Freight it's got a dual paint gun like a little detail gun touch up gun and a and a regular sized gun that looks like this here's the, like the standard sized paint gun and then the little small detail gun now I used this one at first just for a little bit and it was fine and then just as an experiment I tried this little guy and this thing was perfect 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 for doing the 3PO suit so I ended up using this for almost everything um, spraying the suit it just it did such a good job uh, really impressive and I mean this whole kit was like 60 bucks and I just showed you up close we'll walk back over there and look now, any of the flubs that are in here are just due to my painting environment, but there's almost none. It's very, 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 very clean, glass smooth finish on the clear coat. And this is all I used. I did not use an expensive paint gun. Um, I just use this cheap, cheap paint gun. I know a lot of uh, auto painter guys will curse me for this, but I mean, worked fine. Now, I haven't sprayed the expensive guns, so they may be even better. Um, I've held them, and the only thing I can say is that this feels a little chintzy, like the trigger's got a little noisy jiggle in it, but otherwise it sprayed just fine. So, I mean, this is great. If this was a thing I was doing for business, I'd probably invest in more expensive gear, but this was awesome. So, a compressor, some some paint guns. You want something with a fine tip. This one's actually a, a 1.0, I think it's a 1 millimeter tip and I think this is a one four might be wrong I actually have this one as well which is another cheap gun that I used a little bit for spraying um, just water and 
I'll get into that in the next steps, but you don't need it, that one. Just I just this one alone would have done the whole job just fine. Um, so compressor, paint guns, uh, and a bunch of spray bottles. Right now, I think I've got maybe like five of these spray bottles, and uh, I'll get into those later. And they, there's a custom double spray bottle that would be really good to have. I don't have it. I got away without it, but it would be much handier. Um, and but between now and the tutorial, I'm going to build a, um, a couple of siphon sprayers to use instead of the spray guns. And if they work, I'll do a tutorial on how to build them. Um, I think I can do them pretty cheap. I think they'll do the same job that I need to do. So I'll get into that in a bit. Yeah, you're also going to need some scientific looking goodies, which are graduated cylinders. You'll need one thousand milliliter graduated cylinder and you'll need five 50 milliliter graduated cylinders. Uh, these are for your silvering chemicals and you'll see I've labeled this one activator. Now you don't want to cross contaminate any of the silvering chemicals as you're doing the mixing so you're going to want one of these for each chemical. They're really really cheap. Look on amazon.com for graduated cylinders. You'll need 1,000 milliliter 550 milliliters. It should be less than $10 for all that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. You need a big bucket for your runoff water from the silvering process. And I bought uh, just a tent with some, you know, some cheapo kind of tarp for walls. And that's definitely not optimal, but it was better than just doing it straight in the, you know, right outside. It kind of helped block a little bit of the wind and kept things from falling out of the trees on my paint process um trying to think and I, pretty much that's it as far as the like the hardware supplies you'll need the the tools outside of that it just comes down to the paint and the chemicals which i'll get into when i start the tutorial video so uh if you're looking to do this those are the things to worry about right now if you want to do chroming get a compressor get some get some spray guns they don't need to be expensive uh, these, this one worked just fine. This little guy here, I'll tell you the part number. I got a central pneumatic kit. This was, uh, part number. Where the hell is it? Right there. Item 60239 is the, uh, the parts number for that kit. And it worked great. I would recommend. Um, uh, when I get to the next step, I will put it in here probably be about a week and a half two weeks i'll try to get that started so um i'll see you guys then bye